Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. You're watching I Talk Movies on Popcorn Talk. In just a few, we're about to talk to Grant Rosenmeyer from the latest film, Temps. Don't go anywhere. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. And now, here's Popcorn Talk's I Talk Movie. Yeah! Woo, woo, woo. Thank you guys so much. Welcome back to Popcorn Talk, I Talk Movies. Today is going to be really, really exciting. I'm excited because I have a really cute, fun, charming guest with me today, Grant Rosenmeyer. You may know him actually from his younger self, um, Wes Anderson's movie Royal Tenenbaums. He also starred in Oliver Bean. And now he comes out in the latest film, which you millennials will love, Temps. Grant Rosenmeyer, everybody. Hello. Oh, and also, I have like a random guest that just popped up. <clears throat> this dude right here, the director of the film, Ryan Sage. Uh, oh, I get so glad you, get you could. Just, yeah, you get, you get an applause. I didn't get an applause. I you applauded. Just, yeah, he, yeah, that's what counted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank oh, you for coming in. So I, I love it that you're here, and we're gonna get some good conversation. I was down the street. I'm giving him a ride after. So. All right, that's really the real reason <laughs> you blew totally. it for us. All right, so. Thank you for being here again. Thank you for having me. Okay, so we're going to talk about temps. We're going to talk about you as an actor, okay. but I like to start off with like some fun questions, rapid fire round to get fun to for know, who? get to know. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly for me, <laughs> yeah. Let's be real. Um, get to know you. So, are you ready? Okay. You won't yes. get a prize or anything, but it's just for. Then for I don't. Wow. Who wants? I know. Why did I you even know, say that? I wasn't that? even expecting prizes. I know. Now that I prizes. said that. All right, no ready? Go Three, two, it. one. In and out or Shake Shack. In and out. Great choice. Best and worst thing about Grant Rosenmeyer? Oh, the best thing first? Yes. I have to say the best thing about me? You have to. It's part of the rapid fire and you're... My eyes. Ah, okay. And the worst? <laughs> My hair. <laughs> That's why you asked me how your hair was before you went mm -hmm. on set. All right. First thing you do if you woke up as Donald Trump? <laughs> Get a different haircut. There you go. Uh, now you don't like your uh, hair, right? Oh, man. Um, your co-star, Lindsay Shaw. Yeah. Love her. What would you do oh, if you woke up as her? If I woke up as her? Uh-huh. <clears throat> um, I, I wouldn't do anything. I just kind of want to see what she does, like, for a day. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. All right, Lindsay. You're hearing that. Last text message you sent. Last text message I sent? I can't tell you. What? I can't Ruin tell you. Ruin the rapid fire. <laughs> Last all you listened to. Uh, Last Night by The Strokes. Oh yeah, a film <laughs> that that was easy. A film you would do in a heartbeat. Oh God, one that's already been made. Yeah, Casablanca. Hmm, interesting. In Why? A it's Casablanca. It's a classic, Are you right? I you just want to be shot in black and white, looking like Humphrey I know, Bogart. Seriously, in shadow. You can't not look good when you're shot like that. That's true. And if you can, you shouldn't be in movies. <laughs> There you go. Thanks you for laughing, it. Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> um, a one-word reaction to these three words: Hollywood. Majestic, confusing. One word. I thought it was one word. I thought it was one no. word. Three. No. Uh, maybe I confused you. One yeah. word reaction to these next three words I'm about to say: Hollywood's the first word. Uh, oh, okay. So I majestic. Thought it was three. Gotcha. Okay. Majestic. Majestic. Word. Love. <sighs> Temps. And temporary. And temporary. <laughs> No, temporary is the last word. Oh, temporary is the last yeah. word. Temps again. There you go. Temps, I got temps. temps on the brain, folks. <laughs> um, the last moment you were like really starstruck. Oh, man. The last moment I was, oh, God. By some like. Actor. No, that's a great question. When I met you. Oh, wow. No, I actually he do want to answer that question. Right. I feel like I get, I get really starstruck at very random like character actors. Oh. Um, oh, God. Who did I just run into? Pat Healy, do you know who Pat Healy is? I do. From Cheap Thrills, and like I, I just I, I, totally I ran into do. him like a few months ago, and I totally just like, I couldn't even talk to him. I just stayed on the other we side of the like, room. But yeah, character actors like that, uh -huh. yeah, like Chris Bowers in this movie, and like when I, when he oh, pulled up, I was like, I gotta talk to him. Uh -huh. But at the same time, it's like that's I know Frank Zabatka at the first. That's I know. Frank Zabatka. <laughs> I also did, um, I just did a movie called Money Monster, and that has Yes, like, and I can't wait to talk about that, because oh, that yeah. looks intense. It is super intense. I mean, you were surrounded intense. by Julia Roberts, yep. George Clooney. And directed by Jodie Foster. Yes. Never heard of him. Never heard of him. <laughs> 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 like, what is this movie? Money what? Cookie Monster? <laughs> no. Um, I want you guys to both answer this last question. What is your favorite line from the movie, Temps? Or just a favorite scene, something that, like... You have to understand, we have seen this movie so <laughs> many times. So it's just, like, it, numb to you what's now? Your, wait, Ryan, what's your favorite line in the movie? Uh, 
it's not uh, commerce of the wallet. It's commerce of the heart. <laughs> spirit. Uh, commerce spirit. of the spirit. Yeah. It's not commerce of the wallet. It's, uh, and then also another read line. Eaten, uh, the proverbial bear. Eaten yeah. by the proverbial bear. <laughs> oh, I remember that. Which, yeah, yeah that's, I, there's so many. There yeah. are actually a lot of zingers. Mm-hmm. Now that I think about mm-hmm. it, I would have to go and... They're not heavy zingers, but there's a lot no. of like, uh, fun lines. There are a lot, One-liners. Yeah. That sometimes you might miss at first, but yeah. then it gets to you. That's always great. Yeah. This movie was great. I don't want to give too much away. I mean, I did see it for those viewers out there. So, haha, you guys have to see it. I'm not just saying that. And there's so many underlying themes. You know, it's not just about a, a boy lot, and yeah. a girl dating and what that means. It's also just about, I feel like, it's not cliche, but it's like so relatable because we're trying to find ourselves in our 20s. As yeah. you guys are, it's like post grad life. Totally. So, for those who are just a little bit unfamiliar, Give a brief overview or your take on the movie about what it's about, really. Okay, so, well, like, on get a deep purely, syn- you want me to go, I can go like, on, like, a purely synopsis level. For deep, the people whatever who deep don't means know. to you. Oh, man, it's a movie about, avoid spoilers. And avoid I was spoilers. Just <laughs> <laughs> avoid spoilers. And Ryan, you can um, also add in your two cents to this as well. If, you if want. I was my character, Jefferson, who's like a ski bum temp worker, he makes uh, he makes just enough money, or it's just enough days out of the year to finance his annual ski trip with his buddy Curtis, played by the hilarious Reed Ewing. Yes. Um, and uh, he's pretty much got his code of conduct, and he's got his way of life until he meets Lindsay Shaw's character Stephanie, um, and she basically sh- opens up a world of being an adult to him. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it is really... It's hard to say it, because it's about it's so much about what it's like in this period of like your early 20s and I feel like it is so we're sort of an overlooked demographic we were just talking about how we're like the same age and I don't know if you feel this way but I do feel like we're a very overlooked demographic there are a lot of movies and TV shows that either cater to people younger than us or people immediately older than us and I just love that this movie appeals to like us right now overlooked and also misunderstood completely misunderstood and this movie completely just got like when you watch it you're like I go through these moments all the time and Ryan we were talking about this before and how you said you know I, I told you like each scene I saw it's like I was watching my friends I forgot I was watching a movie you know, I, felt like like, I felt like I was getting it inside. <laughs> when, you, when you guys were getting it on, you and Lindsay's character, I felt like I was actually like you peeking felt like into you your... were getting it on. <laughs> a, little, a little bit. A little bit. So, and you were saying, you know, when you create that, you want to create a sense of connection and closeness from your personal life. So, what was kind of brought in from your experience or your past, present? Well, really, I mean, like, I, what I like about the movie is it's a lot about how your past. Uh, sort of informs you on what you do in the moment and how you handle situations, but how you can also sort of take control of that and, mm-hmm. and, and change your life. But like, if you look at like his, when you watch the movie, mm-hmm. you see how his father is and how yeah. Jefferson might end up this way um, and how his relationship with his mom and his last girlfriend, um, you sort of understand where he's coming from and avoid spoilers. I, I didn't, I haven't spoiled <laughs> anything yet. <laughs> um, but, and, and to me, like the movie is a lot about just like, what it takes to be in a good relationship and what you have to sacrifice and sort of those important lessons that you go through in those yeah. uh, first relationships you have. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's what I really, because I feel like all that stuff I went through and like, right. and just sort of self analyzing my life and my past relationships and how I ended up dating certain people and like I date unavailable women because I got my heart broken and I wanted an excuse for when the next one didn't work out. Well, Mm -hmm. you know, she was a lesbian. So how was that supposed to work out anyway? You know, there you go. Go on. (laughs) (laughs) I know that was interesting. Anyway, yeah. And yeah, there's also a social media aspect to this movie as well. I mean, putting a label to everything. Yeah. And you know, your character in the movie said it perfectly. Yeah. How you approached it. The world of social media does not give to shits which, which actually that that scene grant pretty much wrote like that's why i think because you're also up. a writer yourself i was I gonna am, get into yeah, that so yeah. also you wrote some scenes in the film that was actually there well there's this one particular scene that you kind of see a bit of uh in the trailer and it, and you know jefferson kind of goes on a tirade about you know uh what how social media can kind of well, what social media's effect on relationships mm-hmm. nowadays more i mean really it's completely changed the meaning of relationships mm-hmm. i mean when facebook came around it just i feel like it altered the face of what it means to be in love what it means to be in a relationship or what, yeah and it's just it's it makes it public. definition like somehow if you write it down as define you know now we're in a relationship now, exactly because yeah. facebook like, says it is yeah and it's weird and then what happens when you're out of it and then do people like that status or yeah i know like, exactly i was thinking like in the olden times if you like people you just got married that's how it was like <laughs> right away and or even an arranged marriage now it's yeah. just so different i mean even um, just from like what our parents had to this now yeah 
And it's almost kind of hard to talk about, um, at least for me, because I feel like I'm so I'm so in it right now. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like I, I feel like I'm so when when we shot this movie, I was 22. I turned 23 on this movie, and now I'm 24, and I feel oh, yeah, like I was going that, through on the this. day we're shooting that scene. Didn't right? you shoot all this, the sex the scenes sex on your scenes birthday? Were on I read, my, I, my 23rd yeah. birthday, which I thought birthday would be awesome. Sex. <laughs> birthday, birthday sex. Birthday sex. All right. Yeah, but we shot that on my birthday. I thought it would be awesome. It was 105 <laughs> degrees in the house we were shooting in. Oh wow! It was so by the time it, we they brought the a birthday kick out for me i'm like whatever guys i'm over this <laughs> and you rewatched these sex scenes with Lindsay. We i did, saw yeah. um a live stream with you guys yes. i mean like honestly like how was that to watch it with her rewatch it again oh like man. watch yourself making a, it's an intimate moment and you well, guys that's also cre- the first time they saw it too so it's not like rewatching it it's like the first yeah, time it was the, oh you're right you're right yeah, just it was watching the first time it. we yeah. saw like even a cut of that and we had no idea how much you could see, you know, because yeah. it was it was a closed set when we shot it. There wasn't like there were a lot of people there, but you know, Lindsay and I are just kind of going through it and trying to be as as vulnerable yeah. as possible and and as real and just kind of tune everything else out. Uh-huh. Um, and it, it I actually is one of my favorite scenes in the mm-hmm. movie, just because it's so it feels very um, it feels very real and it feels very honest. Well, you and Lindsay are actually good friends. We are, yeah. So do you think, I mean, being good friends is one of the main factors why you guys were so natural on screen or is it just because you guys are also both good actors? Uh, Honestly, I think it's more attributed to she's just a great actress Uh and, you know, you can can be close with somebody and still have it Mm. be awkward, you know? Yeah. Just because you're close. In fact, sometimes I feel like it might even be more awkward because it's like, well, there's so much bag. There can be a lot of baggage with it, so yeah. it can really go either way. I think it was first of all a tribute to you know the environment that Ryan created on set, and uh-huh. second, just um, having Lindsay doing it with Lindsay, and she's such an, she's like an artist, yeah, first and like a person second, right? You know, so when it comes between action and cut, she just goes for it. So huh. it's yeah, it so she's really like a completely really different person when she's like right before it hits action, she's just like pretty much yeah, crazy, pretty and then she gets in her zone. Yes. It's it's actually really amazing, and and to see them both work. I mean, like, they did have like real chemistry, like mm-hmm. that was magical. But it, and and she is very you know different until you say action, and then yeah. it's like locked in. Sort of. What's actually really cool about that is I do um, when I first moved out here, Lindsay and I uh, were roommates first, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then friends, and then uh, co-stars. Um, but she uh, was one of the first people who actually taught me. I feel like she was one of the first people who taught me how to act. You know, oh, I didn't wow. go to acting school. I just kind of was good well, at it when I was younger. Well, you did study Broadway when you were younger. I mean, that... It, oh, yeah, it, I was on being, Broadway. And it's not like I couldn't theater act. Theater acting it was is just very... Like, and at NYU, you took, <clears throat> did you take some acting classes? Yeah, I took some acting classes at NYU. <laughs> like, but I feel like when it comes to, it, to it... Maybe, okay, but like what I but mean is... But she really gave, took, uh, took a lot out of I mean, she way. would... She took... Uh, Got a lot She taught me how to listen in a cool way, you know? Because a lot of acting is listening. And sometimes she would be like, hey, listen... You know, and like I took this acting class with her, and it was really about listening and and reacting to the listening. Yeah, yeah, because it's very easy to just you know, a lot of actors do this. They'll just get on set and they'll you know, okay, those are my lines, and I'm gonna do this, and okay, she's gonna say something here, and oh, my line, and it's just kind of whereas, hey, listen, tune in, take know? it in for a second, take it in, and then react to that, and then react totally, yeah. or just be really, and it's it's. It, it's, that it's applies cool. to everyday life. But that's Even why hosting she's so or good. conversing. Exactly. Yeah. That's like that's a really good technique that yeah. not all people have. No. Our mind our attention span is gets lost. I want Thanks to talk about the social actual, media. Yeah. Ugh. Generation Please follow Y. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram <laughs> and movie. And at Temps. Temps Temps movie. Temps. Yeah. <laughs> hashtag Temps. Hashtag Temps. Hashtag Temps movie. Oh, hashtag Temps movie. Yeah. Guys, sure. hashtag that right now. Hashtag. <laughs> Please. Hashtag the shit. Um, out of me. The production of this film, yes. right? It started off, um, you were generating money through a Kickstarter? So tell well, me actually, no, it didn't start but, off yeah, that way. It oh. was, I mean, like, Sorry. Kick, Kickstarter was always sort of a, a plan be, um, because basically one, one of the great benefits of Kickstarter is you sort of expand your audience because you go out before the movie's finished and you are able to get people that are invested, you know, monetarily, but also just spiritually sort of like yeah. they're part of the thing and they're they're coming along with you on the journey i mean a mo- making a movie is really fun and if you can be a part of that experience i think there's something really cool mm-hmm. to yeah. that and i think that's one thing that's really cool about kickstarter is you can sort of come along this movie and we you get updates and you kind of see the whole process you know we did a lot of live streaming so you can see us like at the red carpet the premiere in uh Cinequest. i saw that yes. yeah mm-hmm. and then or like the live stream things that we did where i really feel like you get to know us 
and like all our faults and as problems. people yeah. and not just actors I mean, like, or people who yeah, make yeah, films yeah, exactly it's, you, you were literally the, just like me or more, anyone else yeah there's a little bit more history behind the movie and so i think it makes it like a richer experience when you watch the movie mm-hmm. when you're like uh you know like most people would never know who the producer is but you see jason all the time on our live cast and and uh, you know it's it's cool to see the those people and yeah it's really interesting and I wonder if movies are going to be start are going to be made more and more like that just I think they already people. they I, are they, yeah. some of them are but yours is actually pretty unique I haven't seen much of the campaigning like that before but but even I think like it's there a were there was one live cast that I actually went back and I watched recently um, where it was it was like a thirty minute video of just like the behind the scenes of us filming at an office oh yeah you know and uh. I, I went back and I looked at it and I was like oh wow that's really cool it was, it's it was kind of, I, I, I in the awesome. moment I was like kind of weirded out. By it. Right, just right. Like, I mean, but it's good is... to see, like, because Jason was walking around basically with the camera, and we could see. I mean, like, so we'd be doing our thing over here, yeah. for example, and then he'd be in the back while somebody's <laughs> doing uh, wardrobe or mm-hmm. something else like that. So it's, uh, I think it's good to give people and viewers a taste of what happens behind the scenes. I think it's important. The nitty gritty. It's, it's got its like pros and cons. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't yeah. always want. All right, that. not always. Yeah, because yeah. because you do want the creative. Pro- you want actors not to feel like they're being secondarily watched. Mm. You know, you want them to be able to remain in the moment mm-hmm. and. And only be focused on what they're creating and have trust that when I edit or whoever's going to edit is going to yeah. put it together in a way that makes them look the best. But, you know, it's not always pretty. And, like, a take sometimes doesn't work. And right. you don't want somebody to see, like, oh, my God, that, he doesn't know how to act or whatever. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, so there's a lot Ryan, of, you know <laughs> that I need the boards for my lines. Yeah. So, so it was a great, you know, we always sort of had that plan of doing that just for that uh-huh. aspect of bringing more people because it's super... You know, it's only uh, it's a tiny budget film, and so mm-hmm. the more that we could get people involved, um, the better. And how did you all get involved? How did you all meet? Uh, it's sort of a, a lot of the, the the typical way that you go about making a movie. Like, yeah, okay. it's, it's basically like, uh, although it's a little unusual, I got the script off Craigslist uh, from. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, um, okay. This is interesting now. Yeah. So yeah, I was I was looking for a couch and I found a script. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, the script was inside. Could the you couch. imagine I if you had it. gotten just the couch? <laughs> so someone just said, "I have a script." No. For, so I mean, so basically, because I knew that I was doing a super low budget movie, right? And I knew there's tons of talented people in Los Angeles, yeah. and so it was just like, how do I get to these people um, that aren't represented, but I know they have good scripts? And so I decided, oh, I'll just put an ad on Craigslist and say I'm doing a super low budget film. You know, if you're interested in making a million dollars, this probably isn't a project for you. But if you want to see your script made into something, then maybe this would be something cool. So hmm. uh, Tim Bennett Huxtable, our writer, responded. And um, I actually had met him at a festival prior. So it was kind of a good oh, wow. good thing. That's yeah. so interesting. Random. I didn't know that. I didn't know that you had that, like, previous. And was he, like, did he remember you? Was he, like, yeah, oh, and, I know and, you. And the funny thing is, so at the same time, I was finishing my first film, A Big Love Story. Uh-huh. And there's three of his songs that are in that movie. I don't know if you knew that. I did not. Yeah, I had so no he, idea. Three of his songs are in that movie. So at the same time that I put the ad for Isn't the music, that, like, the universe working? I in know. A, I love crazy. that. So, so Connection. Yeah, so I uh, got script from him. Then I brought Jason on board as a producer okay. who's a good friend of mine and then um basically put the ad in uh, backstage is that or what's it backstage I don't know. Yeah. Backpage. Where, it's back it, it's you're backstage. talking about the actor yeah. yeah. like breakdown yeah. express yeah. Or, yeah. Backstage. Actor yeah. access all the actors access and what, yeah. oh yeah the doctor's all, access. The, so, all the actors out there so then so yeah so then uh grant's uh manager or agent agent yeah agent called me and Usually I don't answer because usually if an agent's calling, they're pitching somebody that you probably aren't interested in, and then normally, normally I don't answer. That's good to know. There you go, exactly. <laughs> so, but I, I did answer, and he pitched Grant, and he sent me a link, and um, he was amazing, like just really good stuff that he showed me, like some mm-hmm. stuff he did, some shorts he made at NYU, and then when he came in and read, I mean, he just smoked everyone else. I mean, like really? it wasn't even close. Like, cause I mean, when you're a, a child actor, um, you learn, especially he's on a sitcom, you learn comedy mm-hmm. beats and where all the jokes are and stuff. So that's what I was talking about before, by the way, when I say that like, yeah, I mean, I used to act, but it's, you know, you do get accustomed to a very specific style of acting and then it, you know, then you kind of learn how to actually I was actually gonna ask that. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna ask that. I mean, how like you experience the industry changing from when you were acting as a little kid I could go at, on for at, like with Ben hours Stiller about, and about like yeah. how it's changed. Yeah. Um, well, let's get into that now. I mean, but you evolve some. I mean, like, because like a, a what child, did you see a, in it? a child often mimics, but right. you yeah. don't mimic. And like, with how? Because that's that's kind of what you're talking about, where you learn how to act, right? Because didn't well, you, you know, I, I think it's it's sort of a weird amalgamation of things. You know, you kind of learn on say, you know, and also this is not just like a blanket statement for all child right. actors, because there are a lot of actually 
ch- child actors who are like freaks of nature who can just act their faces off. Um, but I, I was more just, you know, you learn what works. You know, you learn what gets the laugh and you learn what you have to do as opposed to... And, you know, that's, <clears throat> that does work. Mm. Um, or maybe it did. I think it, it's sort of changing now. That's one of the things that I feel like is changing. Um, there was a certain style of acting that has kind of like gone out. It was just very... Like, I got used exactly? to a very specific over-the-top style of acting. Uh-huh. You know, just really out there comedy. That's how a lot um, of the 90s sitcoms were, I Yeah, 90s and 2000s. And, and yeah, 2000s. and I feel like it has sort of drifted into something else. More dry um, humor, a little bit dark comedy, yeah. I would say, nowadays. Arrested Development, I think, kind of brought that in. Yeah, yeah and Arrested Development was the same time as Oliver Bean. Um, but, yeah, it was mm-hmm. just sort of, I don't know, it was just a, a strange combination of things that uh, that led to me feeling like, oh, God, am I even good at this anymore? Like, I didn't know, and, and I sort of, I feel like I rediscovered not only my love for acting in college, um, but also, like, how to do it. Was it challenging? Are you know, for, I feel like child actors grow up in Hollywood in a very confusing well, yeah. challenging because you have no frustrating way like um, I don't know what's going to happen am I continuing to act Yeah, everything around me is changing because I have some fame and how am I going to handle that with school I don't know if you experienced any of that and- no not really because um, it was always really important to my family to like kind of t- get an education be normal yeah and like used to be normal to some degree <laughs> yeah um the, the, well, I don't know how that worked but as far as the education process you think <laughs> You think right now? Um, <laughs> as far as the, but they were, they were always like, you know, we wanted him to get an education, so they right, wanted right, me to get right. an education. So I did sort of take a break, and then uh, and then I went, and then I came back. And how is this role in Temps? Cha- like, how has this um, developed you as an actor? I mean, what are you going to take away from this film that you've? Oh man, this kind of uh, feels like a like a like a almost like a debut for me. Mm. It does because. It was my first real movie role. It was my first starring role in a movie. Mm-hmm. So I, I hope people like it because, <laughs> you know, if not, I may never get another shot at it. But um, I, it was, yeah, it was sort of new and exciting. And uh, yeah, what was the question? <laughs> What are you going to take away from it in the sense of your, gonna, of your future projects that you've worked on? I, I don't mean, know if actors do like love, take a little bit you know? of them. If they discover something about their talent in one project that they're like, wow, I never knew I had. Or uh, Honestly, like... It makes me want to find more collaborators mm-hmm. who, when I say collab, I mean like filmmakers who are open to the process of collaborating because there are a lot of really good directors out there who are just like, hey, I want to use you for this particular thing and I don't need your input, just like do this because you're good at it or, mm-hmm. you know, and there are a lot, and then you have guys like Ryan who, you know, uh, as soon as I got the role, I only auditioned once, and there was no casting director on board, which is really uncommon for me because usually there's a proxy of a casting director when you get it when you right, get a job. Right. This one, it was. Uh, yeah, like, like I, I called said, my he, agent. He I was came like, in and killed I mean, like, it, so what was like, it about his audition that really just you knew he, it was he, he was the one? Because when you write things, or when I you see a, a when vision, I read the right? script and I hear the words in my head, and then he's saying the exact same pattern that's in my head. Mm. That's like he gets the rhythm of mm-hmm. what I'm expecting, and so that's why it's such a perfect match, and why it's like an instant cast, and then basically just casting everyone else off. And we got a casting director later to fill out some roles, but um, that's really what it's about, right? I feel like a lot of Okay, I'm obviously in Los Angeles. I'm surrounded by different actors, hosts, and you wonder what happens in a casting. Why didn't they like you? You did the, you did the, you know, lines perfectly. Yeah. And so much of it has nothing to do with. It's yeah. nothing yeah. to do with your talent. It's yeah. really what the writer has had in mind. Yeah. And sometimes that person's the right fit or not. Exactly. Like, or the writer and the director yeah. can have different ideas, or the producer can have another idea. Yeah. Or sometimes everybody has a different idea, and nobody, and then right. like they all have a different choice. And right. Then, and then it's also so. like who can return money. Or so, I mean, like on a yeah. small movie, like this is not as <laughs> right. important, but it's, it's literally like they give. Which you I'm a, very grateful. For. <laughs> so because, give you a list of like 10 names like uh-huh. if you can get these names we can finance this movie well but, film buff acquired the rights yes. right How, that must have been exciting that did was, you yeah. did you expect any of this going into it like what were your high, I, I, lowest and highest expectations going in uh, I did expect this I didn't expect it to the degree I mean the greatest thing that happened to us was uh, during the Kickstarter, a uh, company called Grandex partnered with us. Grandex, by the way, is the company that uh, runs Total Sorority Move and Post Grad Problem. and Total, Problems. Yeah, and Total, and Total, Total Frat. Frat. Move I thought that was so cool. Yeah. So basically, they they sort of they have like a a number one book on the New York Times bestseller. They have a, a clothing line successful, and they decided like, why don't we try a film? And so this was they have another film called uh, Total Frat Movie, which is coming out I think in the fall. But okay, um, this one's coming out first. So this is sort of their first step into 
like uh, TV film world. So did you approach them, or no, did they, they approach you? They basically saw our Kickstarter and, oh, and wow. thought like this is this film kind of feels like our brand. Their brand, right? And so we kind of want to partner with you, and and wow. basically kind of uh, we become like co-producers basically, um, and really uh, Jordan Gershowitz, who's their film guy, the VP there. Mm-hmm. I, I've worked extremely closely with them through the whole like basically like post process and wow. and and so basically in partners they're basically getting it out through their website so if you go to their websites now i mean mm-hmm. it's like plastered with i can't text. tell you how many friends have reached out to me from really? like all over the country have just been have just kind of been have just kind of been saying your face is on such <laughs> yeah. on postgrad problems look at the banner yeah. it's like it's still it's pretty it's crazy and, and they put to, like to see, little yeah. instagram things on their or, you know, yeah videos on instagram and it's great to see all the comments and stuff which has all been positive which is crazy because the internet is usually brutally internet <laughs> yeah, yeah the pro- this is the pros and the cons yeah, the beauty yeah, yeah. And the bittersweet of, yeah. of the internet i'm like what did you how do you feel when you when you see that you know you it's see yourself every, and you still see the trailers and i don't know you like, try and temper your expectations whenever you do a movie i think period right when you do a movie the size of this <laughs> where it was literally like i mean we were shooting with uh, what eight people like eight people on a crew I'm trying to think of the most. It was like they, wow. it felt so rinky dink when we were doing it, and then <laughs> almost everybody walked on set. Is like this is the smallest set I've worked on. Like, yeah, like, this is the smallest set. And, yeah, exactly. We had, I mean, like because my day job, I do like promos, and so we had right. some really good crew guys. This guy uh, Chris Strong, who's like oh worked man, on, like every you know, Fincher project. Yeah, seven, oh, wow. uh, yeah. Benjamin Buttons. He's like a, a gaffer. So, but because of the promo world, you know, he came over and because of my DP Stephen uh-huh. Sheridan. Um, he he loves him so came over with him and so you know they're they're doing us a favor basically it was, like, yeah it was kind of like doing but doing they a wanted to do film. it i feel they they believed they in did, it obviously yeah. yes. the project I mean, that's a great thing like everybody was even though the money was low everybody was at a a level because the characters you also wrote for each actor was so dynamic well that's i mean tim had the characters already I like yeah. it's funny because he wrote i mean tim's 40 something and he started the script when he was 20 like right. literally like 20 years yeah ago. this script has been like since, since the 80s what's so weird is how timely it was even before like you came in and like i came in and kind of did work on uh-huh. it and just how timely it was yeah it was like bizarrely timely well how did you adjust it in any way it was just mostly your lines I mean, it was, or? uh sometimes it was my lines and sometimes it was just you know you scene overall. mechanics yeah. and mm-hmm. but I mean, he's been, even through the editing process, like, I try to be as open and as collaborative as possible, but we, we sat down and did a, several passes, I think. Yeah, we, yeah, it. like, he would, but that's what I'm saying, is, like, I would definitely want to find more directors who are open to that kind yeah. of collaboration. Not like I want to hijack people's movie, but, you know, just <laughs> people who are open to to getting help and to really using, you know, everybody around you on a movie set is can be an asset. You know, and I don't think you you should limit your assets no. or what they're capable of. No, definitely um, not. And I think the best directors are the ones who who assemble their you know assemble their team and then push them. You mm-hmm. know, and then and then take the best, but like keep a you know keep a focus. Mm-hmm. It's cool. How are you? Anything like Je- uh, Jefferson in the movie? I like your character? He's a very like I live to live, not live to work, as opposed to Lindsay's <laughs> character. And um. I think there are aspects of it, you know. I don't think there there are definitely parts of this guy that I really don't like, you know. And there were the challenges of playing him were definitely accessing the uglier parts. And by ugly, I just mean like more human, you know. Like he's a he's a really um, he's had a lot of damage. He's got a lot of wear and tear on him as a character, um, and it does come from you know just a history of abandonment. Mm. You know, it comes from or just you know as you just get older you get battered and bruised and and he just kind of wears them just tucked under his sleeve and as you as the movie goes along you kind of get to see more and that was so fun to play because what what i loved about him is how layered he is you know at the beginning he's you know you get to be the charming guy who uh has this way of life that seems very appealing and Mm -hmm. Lindsay is uh you know Lindsay's character Mm -hmm. is is drawn to and kind of seduced by it and as it goes along you um, you see the the tread on the tires, and you see how that can kind of fall apart very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you get to know, as I as you get to know, as I got to know him as an actor, and how the audience gets gets to know him, um, and where he comes from, you see how you know he how real he is, and 
And it was really fun to play, and it was mm-hmm. a challenge to play. It was uh, there. Were, it was really ugly at times, but when you to, say ugly, like, did you have to? What did you have to delve into? I to just get had to be those? mean to people the way that I try not to be mean to people. Or there were just. Um, I don't want to ruin anything, you know. I don't want to like spoil it. But there well, are parts where the where it's like hard to decide. I mean, I guess in terms of getting to um, that side, it, you know, in preparation there wasn't so much preparation to do. We did some rehearsals. Okay. Um, but like even in the rehearsals, you never really get there. I don't feel like you ever really get there till mm-hmm. till you're on set and you do it. And sometimes True. even then you feel like you. Know, I like you to know. wait more till on set. Like yeah. I feel like it's better to be in the environment. Like we we, yeah. did, we did a talk through and just to make sure and just have them say it just to see how the words feel coming out of their mouth and stuff. But like till you're on set and in the space like uh, there's so many different ways of making a movie that's what's cool like right. there's no yeah. one right way there's no like some people do weeks of rehearsal and that's great it's just and sometimes you need it yeah. how long did you guys take to film this 20 i think six days or something okay. like that. Six days, yeah. oh wow so, it was we did like that's pretty a, well, efficient we actually well, that's pretty i think that's pretty actually, efficient well i mean the original shoot was probably like 14 or 15 days i feel like it was like 13 then, it was over two weeks uh that basically i took off for work and yeah. then <laughs> shot there and then took a shot on a weekend and then with a couple extra days and so and it was filmed in los angeles yeah. everywhere Just, <laughs> yeah it was filmed put, all over la and long beach and san pedro yeah. and oh. Yeah, we went wherever we could. Be, wherever Where was they that let us. scene on the roof with Lindsay's character and her friend? Downtown LA. Oh, that was man. downtown. With, that was that a was pretty so scene. Yeah, that, that was so fun. That was so fun. Was it? <laughs> that was where uh, <laughs> where we got there in the morning, and then the police came and <gasps> and had us all come out because of no. human trafficking. <laughs> yeah, they suspected there was this, uh, they suspected the the proprietors of human trafficking. Yeah. You're kidding. I wasn't. That was the one day I didn't come to set. Yeah, and that was, one day something really crazy was, like, happened. Eat, Wait, eat, so what happened? How did they even share from the middle? She was like upstairs like and she was and we had all come down what and the nobody hell got a movie you guys doing here oh my god <laughs> and then we're like we're yeah so we had to all come down uh, apparently some neighbor or somebody called in because they thought his girlfriend was being trafficked or something but it okay, was, that is bizarre. It was, sketch, it was it was sketchy and not <laughs> and not how you want to start the day. I mean, like no, it's, they, wait, they suspected story the tell. girlfriend of being trafficked. Yeah, they thought that I can't and imagine like, what would give that away. Like, what yo, would they... this guy's dating a ten. She she <laughs> must be trafficked. She must be a slave. Of some yeah, kind. I think there was drugs involved. Bad. <laughs> yeah, I think something. I think it was a bad drug deal or something like that. <laughs> Somebody calling a revenge. You know, but. downtown LA, even though it's up and coming, it's still a little bit. That was sketch. That place was sketch. Yeah, we found some really sketchy places we had to shoot at this, oh hotel. we'd shoot at a motel oh. and i don't even know where that was but that was awful linwood we <laughs> shot in Lin- i will who was never in forget of, like locations did you have someone just no. oh, was it really all the- oh me and jason oh yeah. wow on a movie of this size though kalini you kind of shoot like where you, you said can. it's a small crew and you shoot yeah. where you can i just wonder it was like, just what so you, funny what to take find. people but it was yeah. so funny to take people who are at kind of this level of their game i mean we're going down there with like we we're going down there with Lindsay and like Eden and Chris Bauer was there, and you know it's just we're ta- and and these crew who work on really good stuff, <laughs> just and, like, and you're just yeah, kind of shooting, and yeah, it's definitely an adjustment, but it's very like usually it's like oh I'm just shooting something with my friends on a weekend, of course we're gonna be here. Whereas this one, it's like I got Chris Bauer in the slums and like I don't know what we're doing here, and you know it was That's just it was, well he was on a nice boat. He was on a nice boat. We, I we was gonna ask nice that boat him. that you're that's the DP's boat. Oh, yeah. Sam Pendra is a very nice boat. Um, and what have people said about the film? What has been the reactions? But I think the best reaction was uh, where we got the trailer cut. Um, this place called Oven Road, and there was two girls that came up to me, and they're like, um, they're like, who, first of all, really love the movie, but like, who wrote the movie? Because like, I feel like this is my life, like right now, you know. And oh, like, oh well, you know, some forty-something-year-old guy, <laughs> 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 rolling a nail in it. Isn't that girls. amazing? You get yeah. in the minds of like young, younger girls too, and right. older girls. Like you're, you're hitting a lot of people. Yeah, all of you. I mean, the I actors, the, yeah. the directors, I, the writers are hitting. Yeah, all. It's, it. it's the actors, really, though. I think because they're what people relate to ultimately, and it's how they say and do things that mm-hmm. makes them relatable so i mean it's it's all really a credit to the cast and like their completely ability, ability completely all the cast i think it's, it's a lot of the bts us. too behind the scenes yeah. um yeah i, I think the, the best writers feedback, create the crowd you know they do yeah they do they they create the playground for us mm-hmm. to go on among <laughs> the bars <laughs> <laughs> um uh, at cinequest I, uh, and after cinequest i got some <laughs> I got like Facebook messages. The seven-year-old oh, wow. lady was the best. She's like, "What, what oh, type yeah. of vitamins are you taking? <laughs> keep up that sexual energy." <laughs> oh my She's god! She's like, "You awakened something in me." You, I, I brought something wow. out in a seven-year-old woman. Yeah. Look at that! 
yeah, that's, that's actually kind of cute. Yeah, I mean, it's one thing to get you know to get an ego boost from from a girl your <laughs> from, own age, but from a seven from year a old seven, woman, I think that's huge. You re you reawaken my <laughs> sex drive. That's a. Sh- Wait, I love that. That's the ego boost of the century. <laughs> I really like that. That's yeah. funny. <laughs> but but where, where were some of the messages? Oh yeah, no, I just got some messages from from people who had seen it, and you, and but they were all really nice. Yeah. And they just said, I really related to your character, and I went through something really similar with such and such. And I mean, I'm talking long messages. People wrote long messages. I got like three or four of them. Wow. So people are definitely, re- and it w- it was just cool to see. You know that that it's it's one thing to make something and have people kind of like it and go, oh yeah, I really like that, and walk mm-hmm. out of the theater and go about their day, and you're just glad that they enjoyed this movie for an hour and a half. It's another thing when people are thinking about it and really relating to it to the point where like they can reach out and say, you know, it, it's yeah. So that was really nice. The other thing that was great was uh, we had a second screening with these with, and it was an older crowd because it was a matinee. And I feel like the the forty to sixty year olds were laughing even harder yeah. than the people on yeah, yeah. on Friday and on like the opening night, and they just got they it. Find I, the they generational just, I, I was gap surprised funny. actually. I was amazed at how many people, you know, the older crowd was liking it. Yeah, because I mean, we, we, we just kind of looked at each other. and We're like, are they laughing at the movie? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. So you weren't thinking of that target audience at all i guess you wouldn't even imagine I mean, like, that. honestly i don't think of a target audience like i just think of making a good movie mm-hmm. at the time after when you start well, editing I, it mm-hmm. you, you start like then parsing it out and go like okay who's who's our market who should we try who, to yeah. right. fit this when in you're marketing for? a movie yeah. yeah but but honestly when you're i think it's a good sign that all ages really did relate to it they found something in it i think I, each I take age it as a compliment. Yeah, they, yeah they took something yeah. away from it from either there was a memory from them or they just found it to be hilarious so right. I, I mean think the that's, fact that people don't don't like walk out of the theater is pretty <laughs> that's amazing. a good sign that's a good <laughs> sign know, itself. the fact that nobody left was yeah. like wow that's pretty cool well i mean we pretty much said it all but i mean just another reason why people should just go and watch this movie and also please promote where they can watch this movie wherever they are uh, yeah, well, you can you can find us like at Temps Movie yeah. uh, uh, on Instagram. You can Temps Movie dot com. Temps Movie dot com. You yeah. can see like all the places. But like we're going to premiere uh, this Thursday night um, at the Fine Arts Theater on Wilshire in L A. Yeah. In L A. So if you're in Los Angeles, uh, come on down. Go to Temps Movie dot com and get a ticket there because hopefully we'll sell that out. Okay. And, and then we'll have a theatrical run in Santa Monica for mm-hmm. a week, and then uh, but on the eighth mm-hmm. it will be available on iTunes and all the other. You can get it hey, everywhere. Friday, Every- April eighth. That's exciting. Exciting. everywhere everywhere yes. yes oh good is there any reason like why last reason like why you should watch it i mean it's a good movie i think it really is i'm not just saying that it's a good movie steven was turn it, that music off was there a trailer <laughs> that i sent that we could play or no okay cool all right we're gonna play a trailer. yeah we're gonna play a trailer for you guys so we you have guys a clip. get a sense we have many we clips do. can you want to set up set up the clip i don't know it's it's the trailer right it's the trailer that it's okay it's <laughs> we have a clip i'm kidding here it comes <laughs> Parker. Jesse. Oh, wow. Hey, how are you? Oh, where have you playing? been? So crushing the bitches and slapping the hoes? Yeah, not so much. They must have named an STD after you by now. I swear you had like 30 different strands of clothes. I'm going to pause the music real quick, guys. I'm sorry oh, yeah. about that. I like the song, <laughs> I actually, I thought, it actually I thought worked, worked with the trailer. Well, I didn't even <laughs> I know said, it. Oh, man, they did another cut of the trailer. That's really cool. Yeah. There you go. All right, let's take that from the top, guys. Sweet. Do you want to take it from like crushing the bitches and slapping the hoes? Yeah, not so much. They must have named an STD after you by now. I swear you had like thirty different strands of chlamydia that one summer. By the way, this is my wife. Oh, my little girl Claudia. Wow. Jefferson. Stephanie, you enjoy being attacked? Tempting is just a means to an end, really. I have a boyfriend. Okay. Sorry, I was just trying to shut this down. Shut what down? This little banter we have going on. Why? Banter usually implies <sighs> ulterior motives. I'm not hitting on you. Good. Would you like me to? No. Seems like maybe you would like him to hit on you. Call him like a see him. Ow, ow. I remember filming all of this. <laughs> Not that. That is really gross. <laughs> Don't remember that. People poop in there. It's like 100 degrees in there. In there. <laughs> <laughs> Spending your 20s finding yourself or whatever is a bunch of malarkey. All that leaves you is a biological clock ticking, going on e-harmony dates with men That's in cool their 40s who still collect action so that. I noticed you haven't accepted my relationship status change. I'm sorry if I refuse to take what we have and shout it to cyberspace so people can like it or comment on it whenever we put up a photo of ourselves. It might shock you, but I'm actually looking for something way more than a label. 
go after her. <laughs> okay, don't. That's cool. I feel completely adrift in every aspect of my life. Hey, got you a drink. Hope you don't mind germs, because I took a little sip there. My migraines and anxiety is totally legal. Okay, it's 10.30 in the morning. What is it you kids say? It's 4.20 somewhere. Go eat some lunch. Well, what are we going to talk about? <sighs> the weather. I like to be tied up. Oh, we talk about that. <laughs> nope. Ah, so cute. Okay, but before we go, though, Money Monster, I want to quickly bring that up. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, of course, we mentioned it. Julia Roberts, George Clooney, you star in it. What's your role? What's your uh, character? I don't star in it. Well, I'm, a, still, I'm a strong you, supporting. Okay, you still star in it. I in hope. <laughs> yeah, that's so yeah. cool. And the movie looks so intense. Can you give a little it's bit so of, of insight into it? Um, well, yeah, so George Clooney plays this guy, uh, Lee Gates, who kind of who, uh, is the, in charge of the show, uh, or he's like the, the host of the show Money Monster, which is kind of like a financial advice show, um, and is watched by lots of people, and he gives a really bad tip. Jack O'Connell comes in and uh, takes the entire studio hostage uh, and uh, demands an explanation for why he lost his life savings on this one particular stock. So um, what's your character? So I, uh, I'm in the control room. Okay. Oh, so you're uh, like in the, in the actual... Yeah. Because the whole time, Julia Roberts is kind of controlling what's happening. And yeah, telling. if you look at the trailer, I'm like behind her, behind I her like left shoulder. Yeah. Um, did and, you get to talk uh, to them or interact with them Oh, at all? absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I was, I, I did about, uh, about five weeks on that one. Oh, wow. Um, and I really play kind of the guy that she screams at the whole movie. So it's it was really <laughs> fun. Um, and especially to be a part of a movie that I would really want to see. Um, I mean, yeah. that's just like, that's the, I love those kinds of movies. I love like the good, like intense thrillers. I grew up on really good movies like Inside Man. And, yes. You know, and it, yes. it does. And so to work with like, you know, Joey was, Foster on a movie that kind of feels like, like those great New York, like Dog Day Afternoon mm -hmm. um, network. I don't, I don't remember if that took place in New York, but it was just like also just kind of, it, it's sort of like a, like a, like a mix between a lot of great um movies and it's definitely oh, yeah, yeah I, it's I just like see a that good in the trailer. classic white knuckle thriller and it's really mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so excited to see it that's the movie that reminds me my family always wants to see those like really good thrillers that could happen in real life it's a very relevant oh my god actually yeah. theme we, and unfortunately we shot, to call yeah. it a theme I, yeah I mean we shot that, it pretty shortly after Charlie Hedbo happened and really you know, so something and that was just it feels so timely um, Very and I, th I, I think it's going to be a really special movie. I mm -hmm. hope it is. And you auditioned for it? Is, is that how you got it? Yeah, involved? I put myself on tape for it. Um, wow. And it was one of those things where uh, I really wanted to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my agent and I, like, actively sought out this film. And like, we're like, I don't know what character I'm going to play. <laughs> like, I could play. But um, And then they sent me, you know, a couple of different characters. Um, I kind of put myself on tape for a few of them. And I didn't, I sent it off and didn't really know. I didn't expect anything to happen. Yeah. You know. They were they were ca cast a really wide net and I just kind of forgot about it and then two weeks later they called and they they said can you come to New York I said for what Jody wants you they said Jody wants That's you um, and the fact that she and she just cast me off the tape which I had wow. never have Doesn't I've never had often, that right? happen before yeah. um, well, and that she was so she was so cool about it you know she was just so I, I actually asked her recently I was like why did you you know, like you didn't. Why would you just give me the role off? She's like, I know you could handle it. It's like wow. off like a, off like a like a forty five second tape. That's that's yeah. interesting. You see, you're catching the eyes of many. Grant Rosenmeier, everyone. He is going places. Honestly, I I'm really proud of you. I am proud of you, Ryan Sage, well, for you. the movie. Honestly, make sure you guys follow up with it. You can uh, go to thetempsmovie.com. Um, follow the temps on Twitter and all social media as follow well. Follow the temps. Make sure yeah. <laughs> <laughs> temps movie, hashtag temps movie. Yeah, hashtag hashtag it all. Um, it comes out again in theaters and VOD Friday, April eighth. April eighth. Check Thank you guys so much for watching I Talk Movies on Popcorn Talk. Grant, if you could just, again, say your name, where they can follow you. And My name's words. Grant Rosenmeyer. You can follow me on Twitter at Grant Rosenmeyer, on Instagram at Grant Rosenmeyer. I just kind of, yeah, I'd never, I should have come up with something more clever, I guess. No, that's Didn't bother. <laughs> Ryan, what about you? It's really easy uh, to find me. I, I, Ryan Sage at uh, Ryan. Sage Twit, uh, which is slightly... <laughs> It's not clever. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you have to ask I'm, not about a, it. I'm not a big Twitter. Follow me at uh, Lindsay Shoster. Uh, Lady Shoster. Yeah, Lady Shoster. <laughs> Sweet. Um, and you guys can follow me on Twitter at Kanika Lol, Instagram at You Can Have It Lol. And of course, make sure to follow Popcorn Talk on all social media iTunes, YouTube, you know the drill. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you guys next time.
from producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network. We would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals. 